So we're actually ready to move on to the actual port forward itself. We already have our DVR on the network. We already verified it's broadcasting video. We already know we can get it locally. Now it's time to push it out onto the internet. So the first part is just a verification. You go back to your handy DOS prompt and run ipconfig again. If you remember this default gateway here, nine times out of ten, that is the internal address of your router. That is the address we need to connect to to get the command interface. So we just open up Internet Explorer and put in the number for the router. You do need to keep that HTTP colon slash slash part. Um, that designates that this is a web page because uh, that's what actually what we're opening up is a web page and you're going to get a username and password prompt. Now you'll have to ask your customer what their username and password is. Unfortunately you will probably run across many customers that don't know what their password is um, or have left it in the default state. Uh, it's kind of surprising sometimes to find out how many people just plugged it in and that was it. Anyway, uh, on a Linksys router, the default password is blank with a password of admin. Another common combination you'll see, like on, you usually see it on Netgears or maybe Verizon's if they're still in their default state, is a username as admin and a password of just password. The next step up things you can see um, sometimes on Nettopias or Netgears you'll see username admin with a password of Drosap which is password backwards if none of those work then you really 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 you don't have a whole lot of choice you have to ask the customer what their password is because if you can't get into the router you're not going to get remote viewing so anyway this particular one I reset it it's back in its default states so it's just blank and admin what you're really looking for is right here under the applications and gaming section more specifically the first section here the port forwarding and it's got a list a table here of port forwards you can add the first field here is nothing more than text you can put whatever you want um, for example DVR remote view these next two are asking you what port number or numbers do you want to forward? Most routers are capable of not only a single port, but forwarding a contiguous set of ports, a set of ports that are back to back, say 51 through 72. Um, the rule of thumb here is only port forward what you need to. So in our particular case, it's 5400 to 5400. And this is whatever number that was used inside the DVR's programming. Um, so if that was changed in the programming, you'll have to change it here. Uh, your protocol is TCP IP. Um, and this part right here, IP address, it's asking what internal address do you want to forward these requests to? So the answer is the internal address of the DVR. In our case so far, it's been 83. Um, to go ahead and enable it and save it. And once you're done with all that, that's actually it for the port forward. It's one of the easiest steps to do um, as far as just the physical amount of information. But now what happens is anytime an, a request comes in for this router and it's looking for port 5400, the router checks the table and says, okay, there's an entry for 5400. All 5400 requests automatically go internally to the address 192.168.1.83 which is the DVR and the DVR on top of that is said okay if something comes on on port 5400 I should enable my remote view and that's how the chain of events works it goes through the router to the DVR and the DVR responds um, so that actually completes this particular step on how to do the port forward itself